In this video, I will be showing you how to set blocks on point using these three blocks in a small table runner. However, the principles are the same when setting blocks on point in a large quilt. <clears throat> this will show you how to do the edge and corner setting triangles. In order for your edges to be stable, you want the long side of the triangle to be cut on the grain or cross grain, not the bias. To do this, we will be cutting quarter square triangles from a large square. First, you must determine how large that square needs to be. There is a formula to figure that out. You start by knowing what the finished size of your block is. In this case, these blocks measure 8 inches unfinished, so the finished size is 7.5. The formula is the finished size, in this case 7.5, times 1.414 plus 1.25, that's your seam allowance, and you add all those up and it equals 11.855. You want to round that up to the next whole number, which is 12. So we will cut one 12 inch square because we need four setting triangles for this project. And there are four uh, quarter square triangles per square that is cut. For a large quilt, you must determine um, the number of triangles you need and then divide that by 4. Let's say you need 38 setting triangles. 38 divided by 4 equals 9.5. So you will cut 10 squares. Cut your quarter square triangles and then you will have two extras left over. Since we will be cutting on the bias, we want to stabilize the fabric by using spray starch. Do not skip this step. It really helps later on when sewing on the bias. Make sure your iron is set on a hot cotton setting and then spray starch lightly but sufficiently to see it sitting on top of the fabric. Then give it time to soak in about 15 to 30 seconds or so. This helps keep your iron from getting messed up. I recommend spraying lightly, pressing it in and then repeating with another light layer. This also helps uh, to keep the iron clean. Once the fabric cools a bit and feels a little stiff, then you're ready to cut. The first cut we want to make is a squaring cut. You want to make sure that your first cut is on the grain or cross grain uh, so that we, these triangles come out um, stable. So make that first cut on the grain and then turn it so your next cut, which is perpendicular, uh, will be on the cross grain. So you'll line up your ruler on the cut you just made and then make sure that that next cut is um, perfectly square to the, your first cut. Once you have that first corner made, then you want to find the two ones up in the corner and put that in the opposite end of the cut, the corner you just made. We're making this one at 12 inches, so I'm putting the 12 inch line down in the corner of this square. You want to position yourself so that you can make both of these cuts without moving the fabric. So you make that first cut and then the second one without moving the fabric. And now you've cut your 12 inch square. Your next cut will be making the quarter square triangles. So you will cut diagonally. You'll need to get your long ruler again and line it up from corner to corner. And you want to make sure that you're really precisely in the corners. So be careful lining that up and then make your first cut. Again, you don't want to move your fabric. Pick the ruler up very carefully and then lay it down on the other opposite corner to corner and make that cut without moving the fabric. Now you have your four quarter square triangles and the long side of those triangles are all on the grain or cross grain. The short sides 
are the biases. Here you can see how the setting triangles now fit next to um, the blocks that we made. Next we will be making the four corners um, for the quilt and it doesn't matter what size quilt you have, you only need four corners. If you notice, the short sides of the triangles are the ones that are on the outside, so these are the ones that need to be on the grain or cross grain. The bias will be on the long side of the triangle. To make this, we will be making cutting two squares and only making one diagonal cut. There is a formula to figure out what size that square will be. It's very much like the other formula, except at this time, you'll be taking your finished block size and dividing it by 1.414 and adding one inch for a seam allowance. So in this example, you will take 7.5 divided by 1.414 plus one equals 6.3. And again, you want to round up to the next whole number, which would be seven. So the size uh, blocks we need to cut uh, is seven inches, and we will need to cut two of them. Since we will need two seven inch blocks, I can cut a strip that is seven inches wide by 14 inches long. Then I cut that strip in half, so I have two seven inch blocks. Now I don't recommend stacking them to cut the diagonals because it's too hard, it's too easy for them to shift, so I recommend cutting them individually. So again, you only want to make one diagonal cut, you lay your long ruler uh, from corner to corner and make one diagonal cut across each of those two blocks and now you have your four corners for your quilt. Here you see I have the blocks and the setting triangles lined up for this table runner. If you were making a large quilt, you would have several blocks in between each of those setting triangles. The way to sew them together now is to look at them as diagonal rows. So I'm separating them so you can see the rows more easily. And uh, they, they look like they're on the diagonal, but of course they're all straight seams. And so there's your diagonal rows there, and that's the way you will start to sew them together. First, we'll start by sewing the setting triangle to the block. Now you're working with a bias seam, so you wanna be really careful with it that you don't stretch it. The first thing you wanna do is to take those right angled corners and line them up, and then uh, pin them together carefully. And I like to sew with uh, my seams, my block has seams in it, so I like to sew that with that side up so that I can see those seams when I sew it. So the point of the um, triangle should be extended out past the block. Now, to sew the corner triangle on, you can um, fold it in half and press with your finger to mark the center and do that with your block as well. Once you know where the center of your block is and the center of your um, triangle is, you want to align those centers together and pin from the center out. Again, the corners of those triangles should be extending out past the edge of the block. Next, we will take that um, 
block to the sewing machine and sew a quarter inch seam. Uh, I like to start on the edge of the right uh, angles and since I can see my seams I can be careful not to fold those over. I also like to take my pins out as I go along as I sew the, that seam. When you get to the point, you're going to sew all the way past that, even though um, your point is longer than your block. So once you've sewn that seam, you can see that it's straight across from your block to your triangle. So you're ready to sew the other seam. And again, you want to sew, uh, start on the outside of that block, through that point, even though it's bigger than a quarter of an inch, that's all going to be trimmed later. You want that, and you'll see why you need to have it bigger. And so you continue to sew that all the way through past your block uh, through the point. So you're going to repeat what you just did with the other rows, again uh, putting right sides together with those right angles even, uh, pin it together and sew as we did before. The first row that we did was an end row, um, but this is a center row so you have a right angle again with your setting triangles and you want to pin it the same way you just did and sew all of your center uh, rows in that same respect. When you get to your last end row, it will be sewn in the same manner as you did in the very beginning. Once you have your rows sewn, you want to press them before you sew the rows together. Since I'm a quilter, I always think about how I'm going to quilt this and that's going to determine which way I'm going to press it. And since I plan on doing stitch in the ditch around these blocks, I want my yellow setting triangles to be on the lower side of the block um, because I want to use yellow thread on that solid uh, fabric. So I am going to press my seams towards the block rather than towards the setting triangle. And that puts the yellow in on the lower side. You want to repeat that with all of your rows and then we will sew the rows together. So here I have all three rows sewn together, but we still have the corner pieces not sewn on. So we will sew them on before we sew the rows together. You'll want to take um, the corner triangle, finger press the center, same with the block as we did before and find that and sew them together in the same manner you did the other side of the corner. Do that on both ends um, so that you've got all of your pieces now sewn together and ready to next sew the rows together. Note that the points of that those triangles overlap the other setting triangles. When you go to sew them together, you want to start your stitching in the V that is formed between those setting triangles. And when you finish, you want to sew all the way out to the end of that second V. Next, we want to sew the rows together. So you've got it laid out on your table or your design wall. And you will flip that over so that you have right sides together. Now if you have pressed everything in the same manner, all the rows in the same manner, when you flip that over, you should have a nice little nesting uh, seam where those blocks come together. It's really important at this point to pin uh, carefully and frequently so that your uh, edges are very stable. Again, you're gonna form a little V uh, on each end of those rows where the setting triangles overlap and you want to make sure that uh, when you go to sew that you'll be sewing from one V uh, across your seams and down through the other V. 
So take your pinned rows to the machine and sew them all together like we did before, starting in the V and sewing all the way through to the other V. And here you can see the reason for that overlap. You need that quarter inch beyond your block to be able to sew your borders on so that you don't cut the points off of your block. So here's our finished product with three blocks set on point with your four corners and your set side setting triangles. And for making a larger quilt, you just make more of them. Hope you had fun learning how to set blocks on point in this video.